Well, I think this looks so cool. You drilling the holes and putting all the collectors in here. In this episode, we'll be replacing the old wheel wells with brand new ones using sheet metal and a rivet gun. Welcome back to this ongoing series about the renovation of my 1949 Spartan Manor camper trailer. As you can see, the wheel wells aren't in great shape. Because aluminum is so expensive, I played with the idea of cleaning them up and at least trying to patch them. But in the end, I decided to make brand new ones because I want this trailer to last another 70 years. And so I took measurements of the wheel well and ordered three sheets of metal for each well. For the sides, I ordered the metal with a tab already bent into it because I knew I wouldn't be able to make such a long fold in a clean way. So we have the new metal lined up against the old wheel well. Right now we're just gonna score it with this scribe. Because we want a one inch tab to help join the sides to the top of the wheel well, we're tracing out a line one inch from the contour we just traced. To do the curve, I've just been using the one inch chisel as a guide and following the scored side. So now we have a one inch border around it. Now it's time to cut along the line we just traced. As you can see, tin snips work, but it's really hard going. I'm trying to hold this one down with my knee just to get a little bit more room in there for the, for the shears. All right. Wow. Take 18 minutes. Take two. Of course, we have two sides to do, and this one only took about seven minutes. For the second wheel well, we were able to use my neighbor Scott's electric tin snips, and that was a lot easier. I have this piece of scrap sheet aluminum clamped to this board that has the curve of the wheel well. I made this board so I could hammer the aluminum over it and hopefully achieve the, the curve of the wheel well. The ones that came with the trailer had about a three and a half inch tab and then four inch tabs folded over, which seems like a lot to me. But first I might start off making that more of a, a regular curve and then I'll do some snips and then try hammering it over and see how it works. I think the last time I worked with sheet metal was in eighth grade shop class. So I really don't know what I'm doing. Oh, wow. And that's why I'm practicing with this piece of scrap metal here. So it's clear that I, I obviously need to take a little bit of material off because when it folds over, it overlaps and I don't want that. Yeah, that's an okay curve. I think the four is okay. That might be the perfect snip. And maybe if I drill the hole to curve it down there, I think that would make for some nice fold over spots. That way I won't overlap like it did there. Having learned a lot from practicing on the scrap metal, now I'm using a ruler and a scribe to lay out three and a half inch tabs along the edge. I've been using this drill bit here as a spacer for where to center punch the end of my cutout channels for the tabs. Now I'll take the powered snips and cut those little channels out. So now I have all these tabs cut out and in theory that gap that the automatic tin snips nibbled should give it enough room so that they don't overlap when I fold it over. This part takes a lot of hammering. I find it really useful to hold onto those clamps. And as you're hammering, you want to bend down each tab gradually, not having one get way more bent than its neighbor. Right here at Torbit, and this is a good example of why you want to bend them all down gradually together. You'll find that once they get started bending, they bend more and more easily. I recommend checking the position of your wooden template periodically to make sure it hasn't moved from all the hammering. All right, I think that curve is looking pretty good. So that gap is just enough there. It's not quite enough there. So I could make those a bit wider. And now these tabs don't have any overlapping metal. Of course up here it's fine because it's just flat. So it looks pretty good from the curved side as well. You could spend ages hammering it to try and get the perfect curve, but it's really not necessary in this case since it's going to be hidden. I did find that I had to hammer a lot more at the base of each one of those slots. Here I've used another board to stretch across the straight part of the middle and flip the template around to get the other side. At this point, the tabs might not look very straight, but we can hammer those out later. Now that's one side done, and we just need to repeat for the other. On this model trailer, the two sides of the wheel well happen to be a little bit different, 
one side is just a little bit shorter than the other because it attaches to the shell of the trailer, whereas the other side goes all the way to the chassis, and there's a three-quarter inch piece of plywood that holds the shell up from the chassis. So just be conscious of that while you're working on it. They shouldn't be identical, at least if you're working on a 1949 Spartan Manor. With the sides of the wheel well made, now it's time to work on the top. Here I'm using my bench, a piece of wood, and some clamps to bend a 3 inch tab at the end of the top. I probably should have used a thicker piece of wood because you can see that the metal wasn't bending as sharply in the middle. But I think it worked well enough. On the old wheel wells, there's a rivet about every inch and three quarters. And they are a half inch in from the edge. To lay out all the rivet holes, I used a half inch piece of wood to trace a line along both edges. One three quarters, three and a half, five and a quarter, seven. Now I'm just going to center punch each one of these. Got a one eighth inch drill bit. And then of course continue this for the other 90 some odd holes. Now I'm placing the top along the taller side of the wheel well to start securing it into position. And for this I'm using pop rivets that will then replace with solid rivets later. <laughs> it's pretty satisfying. What I'm trying to do now is figure out exactly where this needs to be bent. And that's why I've riveted it temporarily. And I have this come down off the side. So it needs to bend right there. I thought I would have to unrivet the top before bending it, but I was able to keep the side attached and use the same method as before. You can see I'm using my foot to keep this held in place while I check the alignment and drill and rivet it in. Is very satisfying. There we go, there's one side on. Now I'm placing the second side, and keep in mind this side is three quarters of an inch shorter. That's why I'm using some three quarter inch plywood pieces down below to hold it up. Once I get it in alignment, I drill and rivet it in. In the next step, we're gonna buck rivet this entire wheel well together, and that's why I'm only holding it with a few pop rivets in the meantime. Looks like a proper wheel well. Finally, the other tab only needs to be three inches as well, so cutting that down to size. Some of these tabs are sticking up quite a bit from the surface of the wheel well, so I'm just gonna tap them with a the hammer to make them a little bit more flush. Now we have to drill the holes into the tabs of the sides of the wheel well. So this is a 1 8 inch Klecko. This is the Klecko wrench. Let's put it in there like that. You're going to stick that through the 1 8 inch hole we just drilled, and that will help secure the two pieces of metal together. And all the holes. No! Can you put some more in there, please? It seems redundant. And they look really cool, too. Plus, I think it'll help pull the metal together a little bit, at least. Now that we've drilled all the holes and put Klecos in them, it's time to get the rivet gun. So here's the compressor, and for the rivet gun, we're supposed to be operating between 25 and 40 PSI, depending on the size of the rivet we're doing. So we'll turn this on and then adjust it. And I believe with most air tools, every day that you use them, you want to drop a little bit of oil into the air inlet to help lubricate the insides. For the rivet gun, you want to make sure and install the right rivet set, which is that black piece of metal that engages with the head of the rivet. Oh, do you mind taking one of these out? <laughs> At this point, we are still drilling 1 8 inch holes for 1 8 inch rivets. So the holes might be a little tight. <laughs> so we soon started using a 9 64 inch drill bit. Do you want to be the bucker or the gunner? Oh, I'll be the gunner. Yeah? Okay. This is the bucking bar I'm using, 
and it's basically a heavy piece of steel that helps flatten the end of the rivet. And these are the 1 8 inch aluminum rivets that we're using. And these come in different lengths. Oh wow! Okay, that's done. Look at that! It looks amazing in here! Ah. Oh my gosh, this is so cool! I'm set. Take another clacko out. Yep. <laughs> That's almost as if you didn't want to put them in in the first place. <laughs> Can I take that to it once? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Set. Yeah, that looks good. This is so cool. It looks so good. Yes, it does. I'm really impressed. I may not be showing it at every step. <laughs> When two people are riveting, it's really important to communicate and establish a good procedure. Here, my mom doesn't activate the rivet gun until I say set, which means that I have the bucking bar against the rivet inside the wheel well. One more. And we also agree beforehand how many bursts of the rivet gun she's going to do. Not flush yet. Even if you have good communication, sometimes you'll just have a rivet that doesn't go in right for whatever reason. If that happens, you can simply drill it out and try again. Uh, did you want to try doing the no. bunking bar? <laughs> Set. <laughs> so cool. I increase the pressure with each little blast, so yeah. I think breaking it up into the little blast of three is actually really good. Ta da! Real well, number one. Those rivets were very satisfying. As you probably guessed, my mom was right, and we didn't really need to put a Klecko into every hole. So on the second wheel well, we spaced them out quite a bit more. We also used a drill with a countersink bit to deburr all the drill holes before riveting them. One side of the wheel well should actually be three quarters of an inch higher, because this is gonna be underneath the plywood. And then this is going to be above it and connecting to the shell of the trailer. And so we have three quarters of an inch here, but unfortunately it didn't line up on this side. Uh, so I'm going to try and unbend this bend we already made and then just have it at a bit of an angle and then I can still cut this straight. There we go. That works pretty well. Unbending it was pretty straightforward, but getting the new bend in was quite a bit trickier. Now I've reclamped the boards at the angle I want, and I'm using the hammer to try and get the metal to start bending where I want it to. Ready? Yep. The hammering has done its job, and the metal is starting to bend where I intended. But it's still curving away from the corner a bit, so we are drilling and setting a rivet there to hold it down. There we go! Nice. And that came out okay. I mean, this is at an angle now. It's not the most beautiful finish ever. I had left this long from yesterday, and now we need to cut it at an angle so that we have a three inch tab all the way across. How good does that look? Overall, this part of the project costs about $1,180 with 500 of that being just for tools and about 680 for materials. And my mom and I in total spent about 19 hours working on it. Thanks again for joining us and hope to see you next time.